Welcome folks, my name is Jill Davey and I'm a Dharma teacher with True North Insight. And today is July 13th, 2022. This date is um, the first full moon of the what's called the seventh lunar month on a lunar calendar. And um, it's a day that's celebrated by some folks as what's called Dhamma Day or Day of the Dharma. Dhamma is a Pali word for Dharma. Pali is the language the Buddhist teachings were first written down in, as far as we know. Uh, so in Pali, this would be called the Asala Puja Day. And um, it's a day that's celebrated um, as marking the first teaching of the Buddha. Buddha is an honorific name that means awakened one. The, this, this being we call Buddha it, it was, is, was a man, human like us and not a god and uh, Siddhartha Gautama was his name and became what we think called Buddha awakened one and uh, so after his awakening um, this day um, which falls on the 13th full moon of July um, is honoring and celebrating what's called the first turning of the wheel the wheel of Dharma and the first teaching that the Buddha offered after awakening uh, they call it a sermon, the first sermon. It also honors and celebrates the first one of the people that heard that teaching uh, became a follower of the first follower of the Buddha, the first monk, if you will, first Buddhist monk. And this person's name was Kondana. Um, hmm. One of the little gems of wisdom that came my way today uh, was shared by a friend uh, of a teacher I hadn't come across before called Mark Manson. I'll put a link to his site down below. Um, the last name is M-A-N-S-O-N, -N, Mark Manson. And um, it was this quote, and I was just like, in in some ways it's like yes we know this but it was just really well said and very directly said so he he's quoted as saying this any attempt to escape the negative to avoid it quash it or silence it only backfires <laughs> The avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering. The avoidance of struggle is a struggle. The denial of failure is a failure. And hiding what is shameful is itself a form of shame. It's really direct and true <laughs> and uh, yeah so I kind of followed that trail to um, this teacher's site Mark Han Manson he, he's written uh, a couple books and um, lots of blog posts and you know bestsellers and all that um, the link will be down below uh, yeah, and so this uh, this this quote about the negative, any attempt to escape the negative, avoid it, quash it, or silence it, only backfires. And today there were several things that were happening in and around my world with a lot of negative thinking, thoughts, a lot of 
yeah, negative thoughts that um, were either trying to be silenced or quashed or avoided or figured out or um, managed or controlled and backfiring because that does not work as Mark is saying here in this quote the avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering and so so what what do we do because it happens <laughs> you're not doing anything wrong you can't get to um, a place uh, those of us who are not yet fully enlightened where thinking mind doesn't happen ruminating mind planning mind avoiding mind um, um, the mind of desire the mind of struggle of failure of shame all these things are um, what thinking mind part of what thinking mind does if whenever you try to meditate and we will be doing you have noticed I'm sure what's sometimes called the drunken monkeys the chattering mind the just like constant never stopping relentless uh, <laughs> in a in one of the pieces I, I was reading from this Mark Manson he, he calls it this the spigot of thought vomit just keeps pouring out graphic <laughs> and it's it's true when you stop and listen and pay attention to the thoughts it's just like what what a cesspool it's just constant wanting and criticizing and comparing and judging and like it it's just such a deep conditioned habit and even even it just doesn't stop thinking happens and continues and continues and continues and so many people come to meditation like I want to stop my mind please tell me please tell me how to turn it off because they've seen how painful it is and incessant and ever flowing and um, usually the first thing I say is be careful what you wish for you don't want to actually stop your mind from thinking and imagining and creating and remembering and doing all the mind stuff that mind does um, people just want to stop the ruminating and the obsessing the worrying the going over things over and over again and so what we actually develop in meditation is awareness <laughs> that just sees this chattering monkey mind yapping away and stops identifying with it it's not who I am it's not what I am it's not even true it's not even true most of the stuff is it true is it really true is it universally true is it a continuous truth or is it just an arising in this moment so so when we practice we begin to have a little bit of separation a little bit of distance a little bit of space even if it's just like a little micro bit of space that um, can see this thinking mind as soon as you see the thinking mind you you're already in observing mind how do you how do, 
to recognize and be able to notice what you're thinking, there's already an awareness that's seeing the thinking, right? So the more we do that, the more then we can start to cultivate and just rest in the awareness mind, if we want to call it that. Just rest in awareness, I'd rather call it than mind. This is, uh, this is liberating. <laughs> the problem with the thinking mind, ruminating mind, worrying mind, wanting mind, all that, is that it's not as controllable as we would like it to be. And some would say it's not controllable at all you know how often does just like a thought arise and you're like where'd that come from how did where there wasn't a something that happened before it that brought that thought it's just like oh that just showed up or you know you want so much to stop thinking about some certain thing and you feel like you can't it's like the proverbial you know don't think about a pink elephant in the room don't picture a pink elephant right now. Whatever you do, don't think about a pink elephant that's holding a blue umbrella in its trunk. Stop thinking about it. And it's like, you, the mind's already thinking about it, right? Because it's heard the words and made the association and you're picturing it, you're thinking about it. Even as you're trying to tell yourself, don't think about it. Um, and uh, so the thinking mind is not, is not worth getting in a battle over. <laughs> Instead, it's much more fruitful and conducive and onward leading to cultivate the aware mind or awareness that can just see when when we're hooked and as soon as we're seeing hooked we're already aware there's already awareness um, this teacher Mark Manson gets asked all the time by people he's writing here in in this piece of um, people ask he says people ask me all the time how do I stop feeling so jealous or how do I stop feeling so angry? How do I not get nervous in this situation anymore? He says, the answer is you don't. You can't control your thinking mind. These emotions pop up and will likely continue to pop up because we have deep grooves and we're human conditioned beings. He says, the trick is to not fuse with those emo emotions when they arise. So, um, to, to be not identifying so strongly. Um, he, he goes on to say that he's, he still feels the same fears, the same anger, the same jealousies and desires. Um, he just doesn't identify with it. He instead accepts it sees it clearly for what it is and moves on. He says, I don't let my thinking mind control me. When I feel fear, I consciously choose to act despite it. He, uh, so something I've been exploring with that he uh, suggested, well, it actually comes from a type of therapy called, um, what is it? something act it's called uh, a type of therapy acceptance something therapy uh, anyways can't find it right now um, and uh, yeah so he He's um, offering, okay, technique for, yeah, I can't find what act 
here stands for. But um, anyways, from that, he offered this little tool that I found helpful is to thank the thinking mind for the negative emotions or thoughts. So I was practicing with this today because as I mentioned, there was lots of stuff happening around with there was several different interactions. And so I was um, practicing with this, like, thank you, fill in the thought or emotion that um, then, you know, I just kind of went through several things that were standing out for me. For, and, um, you know, thank you for showing me my boundaries. Thank you for showing me my fear. Thank you for showing me hmm, um, what feels unjust or thank you for, you know, and so I just kind of went through a couple things like that. Um, his examples were, where's his examples? Thank you, thinking mind, for feeling nervous before my date tonight. It will keep me on my toes. Thank you, thinking mind, for being angry at my boss. I really appreciate how much you care. And it's just such a simple tool but what it does is diffuses the bomb a little bit it diminishes the power of these thoughts and emotions and can then help move us towards a place of what response is needed what action is needed what to get a little bit clearer a little bit of space from it i found it helpful today He says, negative emotions are like quicksand, and the more you struggle to get out of them, the further into them you sink. And so the practice is to really recognize there's these two states of awareness, the thinking mind and awareness. And as soon as that's seen, there's a little bit of space between the identification with that mind state or with that emotion. And there's an ability then to respond or to get a little bit of clarity. The Buddha also uh, had a beautiful teaching that I've, I've shared previously, the two types of thoughts. It's on the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe I'll just link to that one in the down below this one on YouTube um, in case you want to follow up more on that one um, or maybe I'll offer it again sometime it's really profound as part of um, the Buddha's awakening seeing these two kinds of thoughts and really seeing where they lead you know that uh, how thoughts of sensuality and ill will and um, harmfulness lead to a lot of pain within the person thinking and can lead to pain with others or both. And thoughts of renunciation or letting go thoughts of non-harm, thoughts of loving kindness are onward leading and lead to calming and peace and wisdom. And so this, these two teachings of seeing when we're caught in a negative mind state and being skillful with that, not fueling it, 
getting a little bit of space from it, thanking it. What is it showing you? What's it teaching you? And then choosing what you want to cultivate. So best thing is to not talk about it, but to practice it. So let's, uh, let's have a practice now. Yeah, so uh, adjusting your posture and we'll cultivate and um, we'll also include this little thought experiment that um, Mark Manson shares in this in this uh, article I was reading from him. Okay, so adjusting your posture. I'm just going to have some water. Getting whatever you need to bring as much ease and comfort to the body as is possible right now. And also finding some uprightness, some wakefulness with your posture or the position of your eyes. If you're feeling sleepy, you might prefer to have the eyes slightly open. And before we began the recording, I was chanting something called the homage and refuge. And so as you're settling into your posture, feeling what do you take refuge in? What values, what truth, what what beliefs and let that feel like a support for you a refuge for you a safe abiding, a safe home that is around you right now, your values, your heart's truth, and let yourself soften and rest into that support. And then take some time here just to attend to this body. Relaxing any tension that isn't needed in this moment that is noticed. Any tension in the face. Have we been trying to figure stuff out today? Is there tension in the muscles in the center of the forehead or the temple? Is there pressure in the crown of the head? Have we been trying to figure out what to say and so there's tension in the tongue or the jaw, hinge of the jaw? Is there tension in the throat if we've been holding back tears or words? Just 
can we just let that be known with a bit of space and width and softness around it so it doesn't feel so contracted. Is there tension in the muscles of the sides and back of the neck from protecting and arming ourselves? Can the weight of the shoulders drop away from the ears? And what sensations are there in the areas of the heart center and the belly center? Maybe numb or guarded or open or hot or cold, pulsing, vibrating, not adding any judgment to whatever is there, just seeing how is this heart center and the belly center. softening as to whatever degree is available those inner layers of the body and can help to release the nervous system that is in fight or flight mode or freeze. As the upper body softens a little bit, we may begin to feel more weightedness through the lower half of the body, weighted, grounded, present. And just taking a few more moments of silence here, just meeting your whole being in this present moment. Very simply, body sitting or lying or standing, whatever posture. Here now. And then here's this little practice that Mark Manson has offered. I'm going to set a timer for one minute. And during this time, try to think about nothing.
that one minute. The odds are pretty good that lots of thoughts and images and perhaps emotions and stories arose. And then we're going to do that again, and this time, see if you can pay attention to what thoughts and images pop up. Just kind of keep track of some of them, noticing what they are, and letting them go. And so we're just going to be noticing what thoughts and images are coming up for a minute here. Just let all those go. Feel your body again. Feel your seat, the ground. Relax any tension that crept in. And so there you may have noticed this thought stream, this never ending chatter always this constant commentary on our life and in that second time just being able to notice the content notice what's coming up there's the observing mind or the awareness that's just seeing the mind chattering. And so we can now rest back, rest back into your back body Rest back into the ground. Sensations of the body showing us where we are in this present moment. And you might like to choose an anchor for your practice or just keep the, the ground of your practice, the awareness of the body sitting or whatever posture you're in. Or if you like, you could choose a more specific anchor like a breath or sound. And when the thought flow arises and sometimes we get caught in it, carried away, we can just see it as for what it is. Sometimes awareness just arises and the sees, knows this discursive mind happening. And in that moment of knowing, it passes. There's a little space.
freedom. And if you notice getting caught in any thought loops, maybe you find it helpful to say thank you. For showing me and see what it's showing. see and recognize the constant commentary on our life. And in the seeing of it, knowing it, there's a little space.
in the cultivation and practice and development of that awareness, that little space. There's less identification and less power. The thoughts and emotions have less power over us. And wise speech, wise action has the opportunity to arise. Release the struggle to control, avoid, suppress thinking mind. Thinking mind is just seen for what it is. So see that awareness is already here. You are already aware.
And uh, on this day of <clears throat> Athala Puja or Dhamma Day, may this training, may our heart's intentions and peaceful conduct help to bring about the knowledge of the path and the fruits of liberation for all beings. for joining us in this practice and uh, if you're practicing with us on the YouTube recording check the links down below and I'll link to the pieces that I was mentioning um, and the teacher Mark Manson uh, thank you